Have you ever questioned what diets really work? Almost everyone I know would like to gain, or like to gain, no, 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 not so much, like to lose at least a couple of pounds. Most of us spend most of our lives just battling maybe that last two or three or five or 10 pounds. Some of us have huge quantities of weight to lose, and that is exactly what we're gonna talk about here today. I have my own strong opinions on this, and I have with me my very own doctor on this exact mm -hmm. subject. Dr. Melinda Silva is with us, and also Paul Schatz. Now, we're gonna start talking to you a little bit about Paul's very dramatic weight loss, but I wanna start with you, Dr. Silva, because uh, you have really strong opinions mm -hmm. from not just looking at years of research, but really from your own clinical experience about diets. And, uh, and you think that a lot of the diets that are out there today really don't work. Well, it's because the easy part is losing the weight. What's hard is maintaining the weight loss. Right. So that's why a lot of women, especially, will yo-yo. Mm -hmm. And if you put on top of it hormonal changes, right. then they even yo-yo even further. So they're just taking whatever fad diet or whatever the, the latest trend, and they lose the weight, but they can't keep it off. Mm -hmm. And that's what I try to do is do lifestyle intervention, where we not only lose weight and we keep it off, I've used the HCG personally, myself, four years ago, and I will lose the weight, I lost the weight, and I keep it off, but it's not without effort, okay? Right, and that's the point. there's no magic pill right, still. Still. It, it, <laughs> And you know, and Paul is a great example of keeping the weight off. I mean, he, if I could show you a picture of what he looked like, this was him three, three years ago, was three, it? Yeah, three, three years ago. Wow. And, and that's how many pounds for, you are, how many pounds later mm -hmm. at this Well, point? about 105 pounds less, mm -hmm. but I was this weight for probably four or five years during that time period, mm -hmm. so. And, and I want to get into that a little bit more with you, but this first segment is really short. Dr. Silva, when people make mistakes mm -hmm. trying to lose weight on their own, what is the number one mistake they make? Is that they believe that it's just going to be a diet that they're going to do for a short period of time. Mm -hmm. What they make the mistake in is they don't, they haven't bought into the idea that it is a lifestyle change. They're, they're gonna change the way they eat forever. I mean, I saw a patient earlier today, and, and, and Paul's a great example of how he lost the weight, but he kept it off because he was able to keep it as part of his lifestyle, mm -hmm. right? And, and I'm so motivated by him, uh, his story. Well, and it's also one of those things where you realize that you do have a life, so there are times during the year that are holidays, vacation times, maybe just a weekend when you wanna go out and you mm -hmm. wanna eat, in a restaurant where you're going to order what you want to order. But you have to weigh yourself really at least every, for me every day, some people at least a few times a week. If you monitor that by getting on the scale, mm -hmm. especially when you're more afraid to. When right. I get on the scale when I really have to go, all right, all right, do it, do it. Yes. And then I look and I gain three pounds and I go, I knew I, was, I, knew I gained something. I was, but maybe I thought I gained five uh -huh. because that can happen <laughs> in a weekend, but sure. I only gained three. So now I can lose. I have lose. a record of like eight pounds in yeah. yeah. <laughs> Vegas. Yeah. 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 But, but when we eat out and we don't control what we put in our foods, the salt and the amount of liquids that we drink mm -hmm. and the just, you know, the types of things and we'll order a dessert or maybe share a dessert, but eat half of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, all of a sudden we realize that, you know, we've added it. But the idea is that you can then lose that weight. So it's not a matter of giving up things that you really enjoy. Well, it's I'm a glad matter you, I'm of glad controlling you brought, it. I'm glad you brought up salt. Uh, I also want to get into the conversation mm. of carbs because that's a big, huge fad right now that even 10 years ago really wasn't something people talked about. We're going to talk about all of that as well as get the skinny on Paul's extreme weight loss and how he maintains it. We're going to tell you all the secrets mm -hmm. right here today on Smart Life. So you come right back in just a moment with more. Stay tuned. And welcome back to Smart Life. I am Dr. Tina here every day, trying to make you just a little bit smarter. That is our goal. And we should all be getting smarter every day, but we try to give you the cliff notes so that you can just move on through your day and go, wow, I didn't know that. And one of the biggest misnomers out there. Uh, first of all, most of us grew up with the food pyramid. You remember the food pyramid. It was wrong, 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 wrong. And still to this day, you have to wonder when uh, the FDA comes up with this idea or uh, you know, some big food group is saying this food is all of a sudden really good for you. You, know, you hear the superfoods rule. You have to wonder how much money some corporation might be putting behind that so-called research that might be faulty. One of the people who breaks it down 
down and who looks at all the studies and who also watches what happens in her own practice and draws from that is my own doctor, Dr. Melinda Silva, and she is with us here today, as is one of her patients, Paul Schatz, who mm -hmm. lost a hundred and eight pounds. A hundred and eight <laughs> pounds on the HCG diet. Now Dr. Silva, the HCG diet is my diet of choice, as you, of course, very well know. And there, <clears throat> there are lots of things we can get into on that. But you have a protocol that you've sort of manipulated mm -hmm. away from the original Dr. Simeon's protocol, which I've read cover to cover a hundred times because I'm such a strong believer in mm -hmm. that. This is the interesting thing. The American Medical Association, they don't like this diet at yes. all. Why? Well, because the original diet is coupled with 500 calories. Right. So that's just not healthy. They did 500 calories in 1954 because they were in a kind of a hospitalized setting or a resort-like setting, so they were monitored. Patients can't do 500 calories and take their kids to school. They're gonna have accidents, so it's just not healthy. So what I did is I modified the diet mm -hmm. because I don't expect my patients to do anything that I wouldn't do. And since I wanted to do the HCG diet, I had to do it practical. I mean, I have four kids. I wanted my family to eat the same food that I eat because they should. And you it's should a healthy, eat healthy. Right. It's, it's a healthy, healthy food. It's, it's a not healthy. like other diets where you're doing a shake or something. No, it's a whole okay. food. It's what you focus. The focus is whole foods. Right. So if it comes in a paper bag or in a plastic bag and there's ingredients that you cannot pronounce, right. you probably don't want to eat it. Or a box. So you're, right. For sure so, not a box. So you want to so, focus on whole foods. Okay, so the original protocol by Dr. Simeon calls for 500 calories, as you mentioned. That's the diet that I did. It is hardcore mm -hmm. and brutal. You'll lose one, two, sometimes three pounds in a day. Um, when you take that calorie number up, uh, in Paul's case, you gave him 1,200 calories. Um, now I believe your standard is around 1,000 calories for mm -hmm. most, most of your patients on this diet. How much slower is that daily weight loss? Well, women will typically lose 15 to 20 pounds in six weeks, okay. and men can lose 25 to 30. Okay. So it's still a significant weight loss. But the most important thing is that you keep the weight off. Right. Because when people have drastic weight loss, that's harder to keep off mm -hmm. because it's such a change for their body. Right. So it's better to be slower. And I don't really even have patients count calories. I know that I ha they can go on a fitness pal or something on online to, to count it. But it's, if you stay with these certain food groups and certain foods, then you don't have to really worry about the calories. Mm -hmm. I was really motivated by Paul because he developed his own system to maintain the weight loss because he was so motivated by his and weight loss. And I want loss. to talk about that, but first I want you to show us your pants. Okay. If you, <laughs> which sounds like a strange well, request. That just yes. happened. Both of us can well, fit. both of us are about the size of the <laughs> oh, yeah. <clears throat> but That's the quite a big difference. Yeah, this most, is huge. But the most interesting thing is that I didn't really realize that this was me. Mm. I was just mm -hmm. comfortable with who I was as a person, and but um, I was... Um, become more aware of this later when we pulled these out and took a look and I received a photograph from one of my friends who I'd given some of the clothes to to give to the church and two of his kids got inside my pants and still had some room left over and took a picture and sent it to me and I realized then just what an impact that was. What a huge impact. But, but even more than that is that when I'm out in public and I see people and realize that they're in these same pants. Mm. Pe people that are in the same condition. You, feel for them. Mm -hmm. you really do because you really do. and because mm -hmm. it's a majority of the people that you see. It's not just a small percentage. It's it's usually half the people in a restaurant, for instance. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. Um, and so for your diet, you did you said around a twelve hundred calorie diet consisting mostly of protein, but it's not that there are no carbs at all. Tell us what you did specifically well, for the diet portion. Well the first thing I realized is that in order to lose weight I had to eat. And I think that's one of the misconceptions that people think that starvation is dieting. You had to eat. In our, in our situation, uh, Dr. Silva told me that she wanted me to eat three meals a day and uh, two healthy snacks a day. And up to even three snacks if 9.30 at night I'm starving. In my own mind, I want something, a treat. Um, then you can, you know, in that case, I would eat strawberries or blueberries or berries seem to be one of the free foods. But during the mornings, I would always start my morning with a green drink that was uh, spinach, kale, and um, it's flaxseed, chia, um, and then I put my own ingredients like leche de alpiste, which I like. It's a canary seed that powder that has a lot of antioxidants, and and then uh, protein powder that is from Dr. Silva's office, the MyoPro, and um, 
berries and blueberries, and it's a great drink. And it's 350 calories. And it and tastes it, delicious. It yeah. tastes really good. Really good. And then um, I would do a morning snack around 11 o'clock, around noon. I would have. So a morning snack would be like almonds, something well, like that? Well, could be almonds. Sometimes I'll have two or three almonds with an apple. I, I really also didn't believe in that you could only eat one vegetable and one protein. Because that's is, a big part of Simeon right. protocol, but you changed, I, I changed I lost, that. Yeah. I lost my weight without doing that. Without doing that. But, but I would also uh, eat that sort of, you know, handful or, or small cup of something mixed with something else. It could be that at lunch I would have a green salad and some chicken breast, and I'd try to stay with the four ounces of protein. And then if I wanted, if I was hungry, if I ate two cups of the green salad, I really didn't care. That seemed to always be a free food for me as well. Not using oils, uh, using some of the great things like what balsamic vinegar with the chicken salad. Broths. Broths. And I found that I can mm -hmm. totally replace cooking oil Miso with, with and beef, and, beef and chicken mm -hmm. broth. I just keep the little carton in my refrigerator, mm -hmm. pour it right, right. in. Yeah. And, and then also I've learned that um, I would use herbs instead of salt. I think mm -hmm. that you can use herbs as a salt substitute. And there are times when I use just a very small quantity of salt or I'll use a small quantity of uh, soy to to, to do some flavoring and it of course has a salt content. Okay, now I'm curious about that because I don't limit salt, never have. I figure if I'm using about the same amount of salt every day, I'm not gonna have a, a, a water gain. So I use quite a lot of salt because you only get those four ounces of protein. You don't get the sugars. You're missing kind of some of that flavor. So I, I use quite, a, quite a, a normal amount of salt, maybe even a little more than usual when I'm on the actual phase two, it's called of the HCG protocol. Dr. <clears throat> Silva, what's the issue with salt? Well, you're lucky because <laughs> most people can't be that generous with salt. Mm. So you, it's okay to use it in cooking, and I, use, I like the, the low-sodium salt better, but it's probably better not to add it to your food. And mainly as we get older, our blood pressure tends to be higher. Oh yeah, so mine's salt, super low. Yeah, see, because mine's you super low, because yeah. you have sl such low blood pressure, the salt is helpful for you. Yes. But for the average person, the salt can actually increase your blood pressure, even though it doesn't and especially increase weight. If you have a weight yes. problem already, and, and you're likely to have high blood pressure from that. Then right. the salt, I can see where that would and be. And it's usually African Americans are more salt sensitive. Okay. So it's it is actually genetic and ethnic. So okay. you just have to be really careful. To be careful yeah, and be to careful. be monitored Check your blood and to be pressure. in touch right. with the doctor right. in the first place. As long which... as you're following for the doctor being evaluated by someone you trust, then you can monitor. If your blood pressure is fine, then it's probably okay for right. you to tap that. Right, right, right. So I want to get to the maintenance because that really is, as you said mm -hmm. in the very beginning, mm -hmm. Dr. Silva, that's the most important part. We can diet all, you know, you can diet all day long and lose weight, but if you can't maintain it, you mm -hmm. did it all for nothing. The thing I love about HCG is that the maintenance phase is so easy. Tell us what you did. Well, if the truth be known, I've lost about 108 pounds to date, but I think during the three years, probably closer to about 150 pounds because there are times during the year when you put some weight back on and sure. then you take it back off. So um, how much have I lost altogether? Um, a normal person, this, you know, less, um, less weight than what an average person weighs, or more weight than what an average person weighs, excuse me. So 150 pounds in the last uh, three years. And how have you maintained that? I think it's because, first of all, I, I do weigh myself consistently. Right, but what's the and, food? And the food that I'm eating is I still stay with my green drink in the morning. Okay. I think it's a healthy way to start and for some reason it creates, a, it helps with the metabolism. I eat foods where I, that generate and that work with metabolism. Metabolism is part of burning your calories, burning your carbs, and it also it gives you the energy. So with need. only a minute left, mostly proteins, try to avoid carbs? Uh, I eat healthy carbs. I think there are things like healthy carbs. You know, I'll eat sweet potatoes and yams, a good rice, a quinoa, um, and I look for some of the fruits and vegetables that, of course, have carbs in them. I, I try to stay off of fried foods. I don't eat a lot of white potato or thinny, um, and then I don't eat any fried foods at all. If I do frying, I do frying with just a very light mist of oil. And then weighing yourself every day, and if you're up, what's your emergency attack there? Drink lots of water and try to um, literally go back on the plan that I was on of being around 13, 1400 calories for a few days, okay. the weight drops right off. And it just to right say, off. the exercise is really important to maintain the weight. Yes. You don't have to and exercise. And that's the difference too right. between Simeon protocol, right. the 500 calorie protocol. Right. Um, it's very hard to well, exercise, you exercise. because you're very lightheaded. And, but you don't have to exercise during the diet, but during the maintenance phase, exercise is really important to maintain. Exactly. And I, I think you could probably exercise even with a yes. thousand calories. Yes. Thanks to both of you for being here. Thanks again for uh, for letting us know your secrets.